Backyard Brains presents the EMG Spiker Bit that lets you control things with your muscles. But how does it work? When you want to move your muscles, the motor cortex on the opposite side of your brain sends X potentials that synapse onto a spinal motor neuron, which then sends spikes out to your muscles to cause a motor X potential, which allows your muscles to move. Now you can record this electricity by putting two electrode pads on either side of the muscle of interest. Then attach the black and red leads to the electrode pads. There's an additional ground wire that can go anywhere on the body. Now just plug the electrode into the EMG spiker bit and we're ready to go. Hmm, sounds like spikes to me. We are now listening to the electrical activity inside the muscles. You can even add the Backyard Brain software to actually see this activity on your smartphone or tablet. This is what is called an electromyogram, or an EMG for short. You can also use the EMG spiker bit to make music. Simply add in your synth bits before the speaker. Then enjoy as your body's electrical activity produces sounds. You can also use EMG to control robotics projects. We designed the spiker bit to have two operational modes. I'll show you. So the first signal is really good for listening to the motor X potentials. But the problem is the motor action potentials are so quick that it actually doesn't allow it to control other bits very well. So we're going to enable a second output that you'll be able to switch on that's an envelope, which allows smooth control for being able to control your projects. Your bits run on batteries, which means that they're portable and wearable. This is perfect for monitoring activity while you're doing exercise. Now here we are remotely monitoring both the ab muscles and the calf muscles. You can also use this to keep track of your workouts. Now remember, unlike most fitness monitors, you're actually measuring the amount of muscle force, not just motion. In some projects, you might want to have more control of the sensitivity of the spiker bit. Our spiker bit comes with a sensitivity gain, which allows you to use it with a wide variety of muscles and still have full control. We started five years ago as two neuroscientists that wanted to bring electrophysiology to the classrooms. We've developed this EMG circuit over the past few years, and we've created dozens of experiments to let you know how your brain and muscles work. So let's do some science with little bits. First, let's use little bits to investigate antagonistic pairs of muscles. To do this, we'll place one set of electrodes on the biceps, another set of electrodes on the triceps, and now we can directly observe which muscle groups are activated during flexing and extending. Can you figure it out? Next, we can take a look at the physiology of muscle fatigue. Now look at the muscle signal when Max first picks up a heavy toolbox. At first, they seem to fill the entire screen. That's a full signal. But when his muscles begin to tire, you'll notice a change. Under the intense weight, the muscles run out of oxygen and switch to an anaerobic mode. During this phase, his muscle fibers are filling up with lactic acid and other waste products and can no longer be a part of the task. As the fibers drop out, the signal decreases. Note that the EMG is about half of the full signal. Until such point that there's so few fibers that even the strongest person in the world just can't hold on. And finally, let's take a look at some cognitive brain functions. When we press this button, this light will come on and we'll put a tick on the screen, like this. We've asked our subject to flex her muscles every time she sees the light. Now freeze. The time between when the LED comes on and the muscles fire is known as a reaction time. In this case, it's about 150 milliseconds. This is how long it takes for the visual system to detect the light and for the motor cortex to react. Now we're going to slightly change the task. We change from one LED to two colored LEDs and have a screen for the light to project onto. Now we've told our subject to only respond when she sees a red LED. 
Will her reaction time be faster or slower? What extra processes are happening inside of her brain for her to do this? And do you think we can use a reaction time to figure out how long that process took? These are only just the beginning of questions that you can ask with the EMG Spiker Bit. Backyard Brains, what will you discover?